Okay, so the first tool we're going to use is the rectangle tool. And you can see in bold, as you hover over it, it says R. So the letter R is your shortcut to go to the rectangle tool. So most of the shortcuts, the letters will relate to the function that you're doing, or like in this case, you're drawing a rectangle. So rather than it being a select tool, it's the rectangle tool. So the shortcut is R. So if we press R, we'll have our rectangle tool highlighted. Now there's quite a few different things that we can do with the rectangle tool. It's not just a simple selection tool, which a lot of people think it is. The first thing I'd suggest to do is down here on the left hand side, there's a highlight button. I'd keep that ticked. I'll show you why. I'm just going to open a file now. Okay, so I've got a picture open here and what I've got at the moment is the highlight tool selected. So if I untick that for a minute, if I wanted to make a selection, you'll see it's just a normal rectangle coming up. So here's my rectangle here, and it's just selecting as normal. However, if I click the highlight button, it fades out anything that I haven't selected, so I can see better the selection I've made. I really like having this on, so I leave this on all the time. Whether you want to use that option or not is up to you. So. To start with, we've got the normal select mode on, so this will just select whatever you want to pick. So you can change that box, you can change a size, no problem. But say you wanted to add an extra bit onto here without reselecting, you could just click this next option here, which is add to the current selection. So if we choose this option instead, you can add another section onto that. So then the section you've selected is this bit here. These squares here aren't actually selected. If I added, you can see there where I've clicked off, you can see the two rectangles I originally selected are joined together. That's the selection we've made. So if I took another selection here, that's added that onto that selection. So when we look at the entire lot, when I click onto the background, it draws this big rectangle to show you the, the section that we're taking it from. But it's actually just the bit with the dotted, it's called ants lines, these moving lines. Um, when you see them, that's the area that we've selected. So if I just control C and paste it into a new document for you, you'll be able to see that all we selected were those rectangles. So that's pasted into a new document there. So I'll just close that, don't want to save it. So that's what happens when you want to add an extra rectangle on. But say I wanted to do that without clicking on this box, you can just hold down the shift key and draw that extra rectangle and you see it's joined it on and what you'll notice is if you look at the selection icon here where your mouse is when you hold down shift there's a plus icon so that means you're adding to the selection so if you keep shift held down you see the plus stays there and that's added onto the selection as soon as I take my hand off the shift key it disappears so that's that one alternatively if you wanted to do something different um, say you wanted to take away a section of this, say I thought no, I want to take a chunk out of this corner, I don't want all of this corner, then I've got this third option which is to subtract from the current selection. So I would draw that box there and you see that it's now kept this other selection, it's taken that chunk out. Same as the other option but this time you hold down control. So if we go back to the normal one you see the, the box to select there, if I hold down control that's taken it away. The intersect with current selection option, that's a little bit more confusing. What we'll do is we'll just take two boxes here. So we've got these two boxes selected here, but perhaps all I wanted was a square with two chunks taken out the side. I've changed my mind. So I'll click this option and what I'll do is I'll draw the square where I want the two chunks to be taken out and when I let go it will keep that new selection but with those chunks still missing. So those are your options for your main types of selection. If I'm honest, I would usually just use the normal rectangle tool and I would flip between shift and control and you can see the icon, icons coming up, the plus and the minus, in order to add or take away from the selection that I've got here. Okay. So another option we've got is this checkbox for feathered edges. Uh, if you've never done feathered edges before, it's quite cool if we select it. It's on quite a low radius at the moment, so it's not going to spread out very far. So if we take a selection of this picture, I'll just take this one here, and Control c I'll paste it into a new image. And what you'll see 
is that the edges of the image are slightly faded out. If I just click off. You can't really tell because it is a very small amount that's faded out. However, if we boost this radius up, well, we might as well go all the way up to 100. Do the same thing with this selection. Control C, put it into a new image, and Control V. You'll see that the faded part of the picture is a lot more prominent. So the whole edge of this picture is faded out. It's a really nice effect if you want to put a nice um, collage of images together and things like that. So I'm not going to save that. Another option you've got that works with this is rounded corners. So as you probably guessed, you select that and the corners of the box become rounded. And again, your radius will affect how rounded they'll be. So on a low radius, we control C, control N and control V. So that was copy new paste. Here's our selection with rounded edges, but maybe we want rounder edges. So we'll boost that radius up. So now we've got very feathered edges and very rounded edges. Control C for copy, Control N for a new document, and Control V for paste. And you'll see that the edges of these boxes are very rounded. So it's a nice smooth faded effect onto your selection. Anti-aliasing, um, it's, it's good to have it selected because basically when you're using two effects together, it helps to avoid any problems because you've got the feathered edges and the round corners. It, it can uh, affect the quality of your image. So I'll keep that checked. Um, we've got expand from center. This is a type of selection. So if we add our normal selection on, I'm just going to take the feathered edges off and everything. So we're just on a normal selection. And say I wanted this tree to be the center of a square image. So I'm going to try and draw a square around this tree. I'm going to guess that that's sort of in the center there might adjust it a little bit until I get it right. However, if I select expand from center, I can click in the center of this tree, pull out, and I know that that box that I'm creating there, that tree is always going to be in the center. So it's expanding from there. So that tree is always in the center of the image. Now we've got the type of box shape here. So if we didn't have that selected, you can see that we can pick any shape that we want when we're selecting. However, if we go for fixed and we go for aspect ratio, then everything's going to be within the same dimension. So that's, that's basically a square. It's expanding the same amount horizontally and vertically. If we change that to width, we can control how wide we want our image. Say I only want my image to be 600 pixels wide because I've got a project and the image needs to be 600 pixels, it can't be more than that, then my box will only let me go as wide as 600 pixels. You can do the same with height, so you can change it, so at the moment it's set that the height can only be 100 pixels, so it's a very small um, banner. And then you've got size, so perhaps you've been told that the document you want to use can only be 600 pixels by 800. Then you choose if you want landscape or portrait. So say I want portrait. It's fixed that box to those options. If I went to portrait, there it is. If I went to landscape, it's changed it between the two. So that's quite handy. And um, the thing to notice is you can't just click and the box appears. You click and drag, but you only have to drag a little bit and then the, the box appears. So that's that option there so you can sort of drag it and place it where you want it okay so that's all of those options there's obviously lots of different sizes and pixels you can change between pixels millimeters everything like that so you've got a lot of options you can mess around with there I'm not going to go through all of them and now we've got guides now these are guides within your selection box so at the moment there's no guides so this is just a basic selection box here if you choose center lines, it's just going to have a horizontal and vertical line in the center of your image. This is just in case you want to centralize something. Maybe I want that tree to, well, that tree's a bad example. Um, maybe I want this darker cloud down here to be the center of my image. I can pop the center of those lines where they cross on top of that cloud and I know that's in the center of the image. Rule of thirds, this is a photography rule and it basically it does this grid here so it puts the selection into a grid with nine sections. 
So where these lines cross, you want to put the focus of your image. So rather than putting the focus of your image within the boxes, you want to do it where the lines cross. So say I want the top of this tree to be um, a big deal. Well, basically the tree crosses two sections there, so it's quite a big focus. If I copy and pasted that into a new image, the way that it's positioned, the tree is actually quite nicely even though it's not centered, it's quite a big prominent part of the image because I've lined it up along those, it's the, the rule of thirds basically. And then you've got the golden sections which is essentially the same thing. If you look at the type of box, it's just that rule of thirds is split equally and golden sections is split slightly differently so that the tree, oops, the tree would be further into the image. The box size doesn't actually work too well for me to show this example. It would have to be quite a bit smaller, the box. So you, see, you could adjust it about and that tree, as you'll see, is still very much the focus of the image even though it's not central. So a little bit of photography theory there, I'm not going to go too heavily into it. So that's those options there. I'm just going to open another level just for the last section. So I'm going to create a new layer to show you this last bit, this bit down here, the auto shrink. So in this new layer, it's on top, I'm just going to change my palette to red and just write something on the foreground. Fat dragon. Top end watermarking here folks. Okay, so I've got my drawing here. So say I go back to my select, selection tool, I've got the text layer selected, the drawing layer. So I decide that I want to select Fat Dragon with that background behind it. So I'm going to tell it to auto shrink. And what it will do is it will shrink around the text so that it fits around the text. You see I've still got that background behind it so if I wanted to crop that out I could. However, perhaps I've changed my mind and I actually, I've drawn the box too big and I want to use the background as well. If I click shrink merged, then it's going to pay attention to that background layer as well, even though I've got the drawing layer selected. So if I click auto shrink there, it's only going to shrink to the background layer. It's not going to shrink only to the top layer, which is the text. It probably looks a little bit complex if you've had too much information thrown at you already, but hopefully I've broken it down enough for you to understand what the auto shrink does normally and what it does when you have shrink merged highlighted. So basically normally the auto shrink will just go to the size of that layer. Whatever's on that layer, it will surround it. It will be very snug and fit very tightly to that layer. Whereas if you have shrink merged highlighted, it's gonna pay attention to all of the layers. So it's gonna be looking at the size of all of the layers and it's only gonna to shrink to the size of the biggest layer. I hope that makes sense. There's obviously a lot of hidden stuff within the rectangle tool. So as you can imagine, whatever tool you click on, you see all these extra options down the bottom. It's not as simple as it first looks. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight and I hope to get the next lot of videos out as soon as possible. Thanks for watching.